This free step-by-step -step video comes to you directly from Haynes. You can complete more than 200 jobs on this vehicle when you purchase the complete Haynes online manual at haynes.com. As a precaution, place chocks each side of a front wheel diagonally opposite the wheel being removed. Using the special anti-theft wheel nut adapter where necessary, slacken each of the wheel nuts half a turn. Position the jack head under the reinforced section of the vehicle chassis and raise the vehicle until the wheel is clear of the ground. Support the vehicle with an axle stand under the chassis member. Fully unscrew the nuts and remove the wheel. Where applicable, prise the wear sensor from the inner brake pad and unclip the wiring. Lever the caliper outward slightly to create clearance between the pads and disc. Slacken and remove the lower guide pin bolt, whilst counter-holding the guide pin with an open-ended spanner. Pivot the caliper upwards and secure it to the suspension strut using wire, to prevent straining the rubber hose. Prise the inner and outer brake pads from the mounting bracket. Remove the upper and lower shims. Clean the mounting bracket with a brush and brake cleaner. Clean the caliper in the same manner. Check that the guide pins slide easily in the bracket and that the rubber gaiters are intact. Measure the thickness of the brake pad friction material. If any pad is worn down to 3mm or less, all four rear brake pads must be renewed. If new pads are to be fitted, the pistons must be pushed fully back into the caliper body. This is best achieved with a piston retraction tool, although a G-clamp will suffice. To prevent dirt in the fluid being forced back into the hydraulic system, Clamp the rubber hose. Fit a spanner to the bleed screw and attach a plastic hose with the other end in a suitable container. Fit the retraction tool, open the bleed screw 45 degrees and push the piston fully back into the caliper body. As the piston comes to a stop, close the bleed screw. Remove the retraction tool Disconnect the hose and remove the clamp. Refit the upper and lower shims to the mounting bracket. Apply a little high temperature grease to the bracket contact points on the pad backing plates, taking care not to get any grease on the friction material. Slide the pads into place in the mounting bracket, ensuring the friction material is against the disc face. Peel away the backing sheet from the adhesive pads where applicable. Pivot the caliper back down over the pads. Apply a little locking compound to the threads, then insert the lower guide pin bolt and tighten it to the specified torque. Slide the wear sensor into the slot in the inner brake pad. Clip the wiring back into place. Repeatedly depress the brake pedal to bring the pads into full contact with the disc. Repeat the whole procedure on the remaining rear brake. Align the holes with the studs in the hub, then refit the wheel. Refit and lightly tighten the wheel nuts. Remove the axle stand and lower the vehicle to the ground. Tighten the wheel nuts to the specified torque. Don't forget to remove the wheel chocks. Open the passenger's door and pull the bonnet release handle. Lift the bonnet slightly, then pull the safety catch lever and fully open the bonnet. The brake and clutch fluid reservoir is located under a cover on the right hand side of the engine compartment. Release the clips and remove the cover. The fluid level must be kept between the upper and lower marks at all times. 
If topping up is necessary, clean the top of the reservoir, then unscrew the collar and remove the filler cap. Add new DOT4 fluid from a sealed container. Refit the filler cap and tighten the collar. Mop up any spilled fluid. Refit the cover. Close the bonnet firmly and check it's secure.